Eric. So if we can go ahead and turn to him 348. And if we can please stand.
verses I must tell. Jesus, 250, oh, 300. Sorry, I keep saying 200. 356. Killing me small. I know it. I apologize. Keeping you on your toes, though. Lined up. 
Uh, it's a uh, missionary, uh, Alan Saunders. You may have been here when he popped in and we put him to work, uh, made him preach. Uh, so he's going to come and preach for us. And so we got, uh, we don't have all the plans laid out, but uh, that's our 25th anniversary of being here. Uh, so we want to celebrate because we praise God that uh, we'll, we've been here and that we'll be able to reach that milestone. And so uh, put it on your calendar and we will remind you uh, between now and then once or twice. Anyway. All right. Who has a praise? Well, tell you what. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to start the praise. Okay? Praise the Lord. They started our roof today. Amen. We've only needed it for ever, it seems like. You know, we, we had all the roofing companies come out back in June. Or was it the end of May? It was in May. <laughs> had them come out in May uh, and give us uh, a, a bunch of companies came out and gave us estimates. And we made our choice. And, and let, me, let me tell you, he's a busy man. Very, very busy, and we had to get in line, and then it started raining, and that stretch, you know what happens when things get wet? They stretch. Well, that's what happened that way. It stretched, and so they started praying early today, and we praise the Lord, and so that's also a prayer request. Pray that if it rains in Zephyr Hills, it skirts our house. Uh, we, we'd like to be nice and dry for them to be able to work, and so but we praise the Lord that that work is underway. All right, who else has a praise? You got your new leg. All right, Brother Billy's got a leg up on the rest of us. So, praise the Lord. Now we just pray that it works well. I just gotta get used to it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how long it takes to break in a leg. It's taken me 56 years. And I don't know if mine are broken in yet, brother. I broke a lot of them, though. Yeah. Well, we're just going to pray that this is the last one you need for a while. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Dakota, what was yours? Please, Daddy, put the ACP hour. Daddy got to work safely. Dad, praise the Lord. Daddy got to work safely. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to praise the Lord for fellowship with his people. Um, just here at church and um, our church friends and friends, um, wherever they are across the across the world, that um, our brothers and sisters in Christ that we can talk to um, and we can encourage us. Amen. Amen. Our, 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 our church family, our, and when we say church family, we mean those that are saved, that love the Lord, that uh, come together and around His Word uh, and worship Him, uh, being able to fellowship uh, with believers is truly a blessing, especially in this day and age. Yes. Okay. Any other praises? All right, unspoken prayer requests. All right, specific prayer requests. Your grandson. Your grandson for salvation. Okay. Your son-in-law, David, is having a heart procedure tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. All right, also please be praying for uh, my cousin Kevin, who's diagnosed recently with uh, cancer, and they put a cord in his chest up and it went up through his neck, and uh, he's going to be undergoing some serious chemo treatment. Uh, so just pray that uh, uh, the Lord will touch his body and that uh, we'll heal him according to his will. He is a great healer. Okay, you know, oftentimes when folks here pray, uh, either at the beginning of the service, end of the service for the offering, oftentimes, and you'll hear praises, 
You know, praise the Lord that we're able to come in here and we're able to freely assemble and, and read His Word and preach His Word and sing praises to Him. Well, I'll have you know, it's not the case everywhere in the United States. There is a Baptist church in California that they are fi being fined $5,000 every time they assemble. And they've been cited because they have the audacity, you ready for this, to sing during the service. And so I don't know what the fines have amassed to yet. Yeah, it's, it's over, well over 50000 And I saw something where they're facing $50,000 in fines this week alone. And, and uh, you know, the, the government says you're not to meet. And, they, and so for every time they hold a service, so Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, that's 15000 And then if they dare sing, that's additional. And they say they can't sing because uh, when they sing, that if you have COVID, it's going to spread it. I want to see them start arresting these, uh, these protesters that are assembling in mass. Uh, and, and, and they're doing what they want unabated. So uh, we, we, we need to be thanking God that that's not happened to us here, but we have to remember it could. We're going to sing anyway. That's right, we're going to sing. We're going to sing anyway. Even that much more. And I tell you, I stand behind that pastor. Yes, sir. I stand behind him and his oh. church. And the, the decision that they've made, um, you know, so when we praise God for those freedoms, you know, if I would have told you that there was such a church that this was happening to, and I didn't tell you where it was, you would have thought it was some communist land. Yes, it is. But Well, yeah, it's in California, so you're right. I'm mostly land. Uh, so we need to be praying for them, praying that God will intervene. And, and I'm not saying this is why, but that state is on fire, literally. Yes, and if I was that governor, and if I was the state representatives, I would hit my knees yes. and plead for God's forgiveness. Yes. <coughs> so we need to remember, because folks, that ain't right. That ain't right. That's not good English, but it's true. All righty. Other prayer requests. Let's just uh, you know that the Lord here will continue to watch over us and keep us safe and healthy. Uh, in this area, we have been truly blessed uh, that it's been minimal. Yes. Some areas are going through. Yes, and uh, I tell you, when I see, uh, you know, again, I, I don't have cable, so fortunately, I don't get a daily dose of the mainstream media poison. You know, I'll pick things up online and I, I'm able to pick up enough about the riots and, and these things. And, you know, I, I saw something the other day, I had to watch the video and uh, out in Washington State, I think it was, uh, Seattle University, I think, I could be wrong on the school, but the university, this particular university police department, you know, a lot of colleges, universities have a police department. Yes, they are, yeah. they are, real police officers. Yeah, yeah. Well, this police, this police chief said, here at this campus, our police officers are going to be unarmed. Yeah. And we're going to have uh, less lethal, which means. Uh, a taser, pepper spray, maybe a baton. And if things get really out of hand, we'll call another agency. In other words, this chief is saying, 
If things get really out of hand, we'll call the real police. Yeah. I have no idea what this man was thinking. Um, He's bound to pressure. Yeah, you know, bowing to pressure, and I think there's a lot of cops that are looking for work elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. I imagine I was talking to, you know, a cop buddy today, and, and you know, that was his comment. He said, yeah, yeah. It's not I mean, bad here, that reason. No, no. Uh, you know, we, we had the, the looting and rioting in Tampa. Yes. And they, they did burn some stores. Uh, and that was one weekend. And I don't think we've had anything further. Okay. But listen, if you are if you live outside these these big cities and you have to go to the big city, you best go prepare. Hey, look out. Yeah. Hang on. You go prepared and I don't recommend you go alone. Right. Any other prayer requests? Y'all are cutting into my preaching. Well, one of them is the Brown Governor. I've seen a post today where he said that State Florida would never be shut down again in any manner. Yeah, I saw that too. Uh, our, our governor stated that uh, once things get back to normal, he will never shut the state down again. So. Um, and of course, we have to be praying for uh, those, our representatives that go to Washington, uh, the yes. president. Uh, you know, I see some uh, veterans that are running for office in other states, and I've seen some of the commercials, and it's like, wow, I wish they were running for office here so I could vote for them, because, you know, they're really squared away, they, they love America. Um, but we need, to, we need to do our part, and our part, first and foremost, is pray. Uh, second, we have to do our part and vote. You know, it, it's it, President Trump, it's not a shoe in that he's going to be reelected. No, it's not. And uh, if you don't vote, it's a vote for the opposition. That's right. If you do not go and cast your vote for your candidate, then your absence is a vote for the other guy. That's right. All right. Anything else? Um, for our friends and uh, sister that's uh, pregnant, um, and then for um, our friends that have recently had babies, that they would just continue to do well uh, with their health. And then, um, as Nathaniel updated us, um, <coughs> for her Savannah's and um, her health and their family. Um, uh, she had been given not long to live, but I do believe they are trying some other treatments as well. So just for the words. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, if that's all, then uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. And then we'll worship him with our tithe and our offering. Brother Jim, can I put you to work, sir? Sure. And uh, I'll split split it with you. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we truly are thankful for the opportunity that we have to gather together in your house and in your name. And to have your word that we're able to open it and worship from it. We thank you that we are able to uh, sing praises unto you. And Father, we do pray for those that are being persecuted. Uh, pray for this church in California that you would just intervene, that you would work in the hearts of those that are doing the persecuting, that they would come under conviction, that they would get saved, and that uh, you would deal with that situation again according to your will. Father, we know these requests that we've received, and we know that there are a lot more. We have folks of our number that have health issues, uh, several with back problems, having procedures. We ask that you would touch their bodies, that you would intervene, that you would give them comfort, 
you would give the doctors wisdom, uh, and that you would heal them, again, according to your will. Father, we pray for the financial needs represented here. Some folks not able to work. Some folks, their hours have been cut or their pay has been cut. We know that our employment is your means of meeting our need. And help us to remember we're not trusting in our employer, but we're trusting in you. Uh, I ask that you would increase our faith, that we would trust you even more. And then we pray for the spiritual needs that are represented here. Uh, for our lost loved ones, our la lost family, friends, that you would do a work in their heart. Show them their need of a Savior. That you would convict them. And that you would use us and you are drawing them to you. Now, Father, as we worship you with your tithe and our offering, we do ask that you would accept it from a grateful and a joyful heart and that it would be used for the furtherance of the gospel. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen.
excuse me. Um, uh, well, how did it go? Yeah, I've done lost it now. Uh, okay, there it is. A celebration rings, giving praise to the King, and all the angels sing, Holy, Holy, around your golden throne, praises go on and on, you reign in majesty, that sounds like heaven to me, around your New, right? Sorry? That's new? Have you seen it? All right. Last week, who wants to tell me what the question was last week? What is sin? What is sin? That was our question for last week. Now, the the basic answer was the transgression of the law is sin, right? We're going to touch on that briefly real quick, and then we're going to go to the new question. When we talk about sin, and uh, for example, some people believe that certain things that God says is a sin or is sinful, they do not consider it to be a sin or to be sinful. Now, I know that sounds, that sounds odd because I figure if there's anybody who knows what is a sin, it's God. Amen. Right? Uh, you know, and, and it's not like we don't know what they are because I think he's written them down somewhere. Right? In his word. Mm -hmm. And he even gave us a synopsis. Right? We call it the Ten Commandments. Right? People say, I'm keeping the Ten Commandments to go to heaven. Well, if you're going to keep God's law to go to heaven, it's more than ten. Amen. But the ten was a synopsis, if you will. Uh, for example, thou shalt not kill. It is, is uh, we read that, so does God mean that we're not to kill he does. Um, how about, and I'm going to step on toes, uh, not of anybody here, I don't mean that, but out there, uh, there may be somebody watching who, who may take offense, but uh, in the Ten Commandments it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, I know some people that uh, have a flippant attitude when it comes towards sin. Right? And uh, I remember up in uh, Georgia, uh, we lived in Whitfield County. I worked in Whitfield County. And Murray County was considered a dry county. Meaning, they, could have, they, they still had alcohol. You could still buy alcohol. You could buy beer and wines, uh, wine coolers, but you couldn't buy, buy any of the hard stuff. And they were about to change that law, and they were going to allow the sale of hard liquor. And this guy I worked with, and he professed to be a Christian, and he very well may be. I'm not saying he's not, because I don't know his heart. But he made the comment that he was going to get one of the first liquor licenses in Murray County. And I said, brother, you can't do that and be right with God. 
Amen. The Bible says, Woe unto them that giveth his neighbor strong drink. And that word woe means judgment. And he looked at me and he said, Don't worry, I'm not going to be giving it. They're going to be paying for it. <laughs> and I shook my head. I said, You know, you can, you can get flippant with me, but you're not going to do you know, very well when you get flippant with God. Now, I want you to turn real quick to Proverbs chapter 6. See, when we think about sin, and I know before I got saved, I thought I was okay. I thought I was going to heaven. Uh, because uh, in, my, in my mind and in my way of thinking, uh, I didn't deserve to go to hell. But let me tell you something. You don't have to do anything to deserve to go to hell. Because what I've learned is I deserve to go to hell. But you see, in my mind, only people like Hitler would die and go to hell. And Stalin. And Mussolini. Right? People like Ted Bundy. Because they had done such evil. But I want to look at a couple verses here in Proverbs chapter 6. Uh, we're going to look at, starting with verse 16. Proverbs 6, verse 16. These six, six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. 17, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. That's you, Planned Parenthood. That's you. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren. So God lists seven things that he hates. And the first one is a proud look. That's not something you do, it's something you are. It's what's in your heart. Then he goes on about some, some behavioral issues. But there are people that will argue with you. For example, and I saw where I couldn't believe it. I saw it on Facebook so we know it's true. This man, the thing that caught my eye is this man is supposed to be a former preacher I don't know if he was a pastor, but a former preacher, and he's running for office, and he lied, and he told the people that abortion is compatible with God's word. Lord help you. Wow. God hates hands that shed innocent blood. Yes. What more needs to be said? Planned Parenthood is an industry that that's all they do. All right, somebody's going to say, no, they provide other health services to women. All right, maybe they do, but none of that matters. Maybe that would matter if they weren't killing babies by the millions. I, I shared a post on my wall on Facebook uh, this afternoon. It said, you can't vote. I, I'm going to paraphrase because I can't remember and my phone's in use. But something along the lines of, 
You can't vote on Tuesday for people that kill babies and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus on Sunday. Those are not compatible. Listen, if, if you are born again, if you are truly born again, you cannot be right with God and support abortion. I don't care who does it. And I don't care for what reason. Somebody, I, I heard somebody say this one time and it just, you know, we, we decide when we make love. God decides when to make life. Amen. And I know if a, uh, if a lady's been raped, she's not making love. I understand that. But you understand what I'm saying. God is the author, the giver and sustainer of life. And he says he hates hands. That sheds innocent blood. People like to say, oh, God is love. God is love. Absolutely. And you are equipped to love until you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. But God is a holy God. Don't, make, don't mistake his love for you as him winking at your sin. Saying, you know what? I love you, so we're not going to worry about that. No. He says he... And people say, well, Christians ought not to hate. Wrong. Christians are to hate what God hates. Yes. But there are people that will fight you. People that claim the title of Christian... And say that abortion is not only is it okay, but it's God approved. If you got a thing called a Bible that supports abortion, you need to burn it. Because it's not God's word. Amen. You the only Bible for the English speaking people is the King James Bible. And you know, I've shown in the past how we could take verses out of context. To prove anything we want. That's what Satan does. But you got to look at the totality of Scripture and you got to leave it in context. Okay? But last week we asked the question what is sin? And we got some great answers. If, if you're watching online and you didn't see last week's, go back. Watch last week's. If, you know, something being a sin is not subjective. It's not God's opinion. God says it's sin. You take it to the bank. It's sin. All right. We may have time to get to the to tonight's question. But anybody have anything else they want to add about sin? All right, moving on. Here is a, a, a good question. Did all mankind fall in Adam's first transgression? In other words, when Adam and Eve partook of the forbidden fruit, that is the original sin. And the world became a fallen world. Yes. So when they fell in sin, did all of mankind fall in sin? Yes. yes. The answer is yes. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. If you have a super duper giant print Bible, 
It's on page 1718. And just for the record, if somebody is watching this and you've had an abortion, I need to tell you, God loves you. I need to tell you, I love you. Abortion, as horrific as it is, is forgivable to God. Amen. Amen. Some people think that there are certain sins that if you commit them, you cannot be saved. You will not find that taught in God's word. Okay? And so if you've had an abortion, let me tell you something. God loves you. He died for you on the cross. He wants to save you. He's already paid the price of redemption for you. You simply have to accept it. And if you've had an abortion and you get saved, if you're born again into God's family, you are not a second-rate Christian. Because when it comes to saving us, God doesn't categorize us. My Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I heard a wise preacher say one time, we might not all sin alike, but we all are alike sinners. So I just want to tell you, if you've had an abortion, God loves you, and he's, he will forgive you if you but turn to him and do what I had to do. In order for me to be saved, I had to confess my sin. And I, that's saying, God, you're right. I'm a sinner, and God will save you just as he saved everyone else. You know, I, I hate... The sin of abortion. Yes. But I don't hate those who have had an abortion. I don't even hate those that performed the abortion. God died for them too. Amen. Amen. Right? All right. So, we're answering the question, uh, if when Adam and Eve fell in sin... If all of mankind fell in sin. And so we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, which says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. As by one man. Who was that one man? Adam. Right? Real quick. Why wasn't that one person Eve? Why does the buck stop with Adam? Young lady. Because he's the head of the home. That's right. Adam is the head of the home. Now, Eve, she was deceived. Adam wasn't. He partook of the forbidden fruit, not an apple, <laughs> willingly. And so the responsibility stops with him. And so he's the one man. All right? And it says, and so death, uh, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Remember what we talked about? There, are, When death entered into the world, there, there are two deaths that are mentioned or that are implicated. The, the first one being physical death. And you say, but he, 
He didn't die immediately. Yes, physical death was introduced. And again, I believe had they not sinned, they would be alive today. Yes. Now, physical death was introduced, and far worse than physical death, spiritual death, which was immediate. They could no longer go on their daily walks in the garden with God. Because of sin. And so, verse 12 says, And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And we see some practical proof to this, don't we? I am blessed that Four of my grandchildren uh, attend church here, and uh, I, I've been blessed to have my uh, my grandchildren that are local in my life daily. And you know what? Uh, two of them just turned one years old. The other two are older. And you know what those two older ones taught me? And the oldest one's three. The youngest one's three. How do those do? They're sinners. Mm -hmm. They've demonstrated that they're sinners. They've seen it too. Yeah, that's right. And you all see it. Right? If, if you can think back to when you were little, now some of you that's hard because that's a long time ago. <laughs> but uh, I don't remember, but I, I know myself, so I'm sure the first time I lied, nobody coached me. <laughs> I was confronted with something I had done wrong, and I didn't want to get in trouble for it, so I lied. Did you do? Not me. You know, and... I had five older siblings, so I had plenty of people to point the finger at. Oh my. It wasn't me. Right? And so we have a sin nature. And we can look at God's word. We can go back uh, to prior chapters in Romans. And the Bible simply says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I think one of the greatest analogies for coming short of God's glory is an archer who's shooting at a target. Right? And that arrow is us and the target is God's glory. And he shoots it. And it doesn't matter how far it's traveled. It falls short, and it doesn't hit the target. Now, it could be at the base of the target, or it could be 20 yards away. doesn't matter. You still missed the target. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know some people that are very, very moral. They have high moral standards. And we were talking about this last week. You know, the, the kind of neighbor you want to have. Because you know if you give them a key to your place and you ask them to look after it while you're out of town, you don't have to worry about them having a yard sale <laughs> with your stuff. Right? You don't have to worry about them going through and pilfering. You know that they're gonna they're gonna watch your place for you and they're gonna keep your best interests at heart. They're not the kind of person that's gonna go rob a bank or a supermarket. They're not gonna go, you know, uh, and of course when we think about sin, that's the kind of thing we do. We think about these big outrageous sins. Uh, but we just saw God's list of 
the top were sins that he hates, and the first one was a proud love. There's one man that I've known for years, and a very good man, morally speaking. Kind of neighbor that I was talking about. But he needs to be saved. He needs to be saved. The Bible tells us that all of our righteousness, the best that we can do, in the eyes of God, is as filthy rags. Filthy rags. Mm -hmm. When I was little, my dad, uh, in his toolbox, in the lower compartment, he had a grease gun. And it was always wrapped up in a rag. Mm -hmm. And when my dad was working on stuff and he needed that, it was my job to fetch it. All right? And I remember I'd go and I'd get that grease gun out of there and by the time I got it picked up and taken a couple of steps, my hands were covered in grease. Just simply because that grease gun leaked. And my dad wrapped it up in that towel to keep the grease confined. And I remember reading this verse as a young Christian, and that towel of my dad's came to mind. It would get loaded in that grease. And eventually, Dad would have to throw it away and wrap another mm -hmm. towel around it. That's really not how nasty our righteousness is in the eyes of God. No, it's not. Think, if you will, of medical waste, bandages. Sure. That's our righteousness. Yes. So the only way I'm going to be saved is by accepting what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. He tells us again in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. The good news is the rest of that verse, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, I have a pen with it on it. Somebody from another church gave it to me. And I said, one of these days I'm going to make some of these pens for us here at Grace to pass out to people. And it has this verse on it, which is Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this pen has that verse around the rim and in the center it says, I'm a whosoever. Praise God, I'm a whosoever. Listen, <clears throat> you're not predestined to hell. You're on your way to hell if you do not accept Christ as your Savior. My Bible says that he is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, would you do so today? Would you do so tonight? Listen, put a note in the comments. Ask me to get in touch with you. You put a note there, I'll message you, and you and I will have a conversation, and I can show you from God's Word how you can know that heaven is your home when you die. None of us are promised tomorrow. None of us. My Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is the accepted time. If, if the Lord has spoken to your heart, thank God for that. Yeah. Because that's Holy Spirit drawing you. Don't push Him away. Accept Christ as your Savior. All right, we're going we're gonna to stop there. We're going to have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Please continue to pray for those. Continue to pray for the Holy Goods. Uh, Son-in-law having a yes. procedure tomorrow. What time? Uh, four o'clock. Four o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, you know, when it's dealing with the heart, 
Uh, serious. That's serious. It is serious. So just uh, uh, pray for him uh, and pray for one another. All right. Let's uh, pray and we'll be dismissed. Again, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness that you so freely give. Thank you for your saving power that there is none that you cannot save. Lord, I do pray for those watching tonight, and if there is one that doesn't know you, that you would continue to work in their heart, draw them to you, that tonight they may be born again in the family of God. Now, as we leave here tonight, I ask that you uh, dismiss us with your blessing. Use us to bring someone to saving knowledge for you this, to you this week. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. God bless you. Sorry about that phone.